Well, good morning. We pray that you're having a blessed and beautiful spring morning today. We want to welcome you to Defining Moments. If you're a returning listener, we say thank you. We appreciate that. If this is your first time listening, then we want to invite you to tune in for the next 28, 30 minutes and allow the Lord to minister to you and by his precious spirit. We just appreciate you uh, finding us here and tuning in and pray that you'll stay with us and just uh, be blessed. That's our, our hope is that you'll be blessed by the words you'll hear today. Uh, many of you that are regular listeners, you know that we try to bring you the word of the Lord and we try to bring you that blessed assurance that Jesus is yours if you have been born again and you have been made right in his eyes by the blood of Jesus and we bring you uh, messages that are preached and we have guests that come and, and they share truths out of their life, things that they have gone through and places they have walked and I know each one of them is different and they, have, they bring so much to us to show us how good God is. You know, I just have to testify myself this morning to you that I've heard of two cases, both within a 24-hour period of each other, of people being healed of cancer. One was a man that we've been praying for in one of our churches, and God has just touched him and when he uh, had taken just a, a short round of chemo and his prognosis they weren't real sure what was going to happen with him and uh, he went back to to be tested to see how things were progressing and he was pronounced cancer free and then there was a young child in uh, the hospital in Birmingham that he was um, he was practically on his deathbed, had to have one of his legs amputated because the cancer had spread all over his body. But people were praying for him. And after his leg was amputated and he stayed in the hospital a little while longer, they began to run tests and found him to be cancer free. So, you know, we just praise God that he is the healer. And whatever you're suffering from, whatever you're going through, we know that God is able to handle that. You know, there's the proverbial question, why does God not heal everyone? Well, nobody has that answer, but I do know that God is a healer. And so this morning, we want you to know that we're praying for you, and we're going to do that real quick before we go into this message this morning. So, Father, we just thank you that there are those listening, Lord, that, that need prayer. They need healing in their bodies. And so we just ask you, Father, whatever their situation may be, Lord, if they're just tired as kids, caregivers of those that they love and they're they're giving them care father and they're just tired in their bodies and need a refreshing we pray that you will refresh them by your spirit we pray lord for those that are sick that you will heal them father and they will get good reports when they go back to their doctors father god and see that the lord has touched them and is moving by his mighty hand Oh, Lord, we know that you are able. You're more than sufficient, Father, and your grace is more than sufficient for us. And you took your stripes upon the back, Father, for our healing. And so, Lord, we just thank you this morning for touching and healing your people. And we thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, it's wonderful <clears throat> to be able to come together and pray one for another. The Bible tells us to pray one for another. He doesn't just say pray one for another, but he says to bear one another's burdens. Get in there with us. Get in there together and let's help each other out as the children of God. Some people, their, their, their burdens are just overwhelming them and they don't know what to do and they don't have anybody to come along and say, hey, I'll help you out. What can I do to help minister to you in this situation? There are young mothers that they just need a little break and they need somebody that they can trust to leave their little one with just for a few hours to go out to the store by themselves or whatever. And if you know a woman in that situation and you could be a, a help to her or a family that just needs a, a, a mom and dad that just need a night out together and they have small children and you know this family and this family would trust you with their children, then let me encourage encourage you to just step up to the plate and say, hey, you know, let me do this for you. It won't cost you a dime. Just go out and be refreshed. You know, bear one another's burdens and, and help each other out. Not insinuating that children are a burden, 
But sometimes they just, we just need that break. You know, I remember when mine were little, I didn't leave my children a lot. But when I did, I had uh, someone that was faithful and committed to watch them for us if we went out for dinner or if we just wanted a, a little bit of time alone that, that we could have a person that would keep our children for us and was a blessing into our lives. And, and it means a lot. And in this day and time, it's so hard to find somebody that you can just trust with your most prized and precious possessions but if you're in a situation that you can lend a hand to somebody you know and and they would trust you like we said then just pour yourself into their life and offer them that beautiful uh, reprieve that they may need. So we just want to encourage us to as the body of Christ to bear with one another and and to help carry each other when times are hard or difficult and because we are to be Christ in the earth we are to be his hands and his feet and we are to be his heart and to be uh, like minded and to see a need and want to help feel that need a few weeks ago um, me and some of my girls uh, my girls as in my children we were in the big city of Montgomery and uh, we were going to go and have a bite to eat before we headed back home. And as we were pulling into the restaurant, we saw a lady sitting on the curb and she was holding up a sign and she was talking about she needed money to be able to get a room to stay. And uh, she sat there by herself. And I don't give to every person like that, but if I feel it, an uh, unction in my spirit, I will. And so as we started to uh, drive by her, it just so happened she was stationed at a stop sign. And... Uh, I know that was intentional on her part, but as we did, I just felt in my heart that we needed to help this girl. And so we rolled our window down and I told her, I said, you know, I don't have any cash that I can give you, but if you'll come over here to this certain restaurant where we're going to be eating, I will buy you your lunch. And she him hauled around and she talked about she hadn't had a bath in several days and she really didn't want to go in a public place. She said, but if you'll go right over there to this hamburger joint and get me a meal I sure would appreciate it and so we began to scrounge around for uh, a little money uh, my daughter-in-law had some money and uh, my granddaughter had a little bit and so we scrounged around and got up enough money that we could go buy her a combo meal and took it back over to her and then you know in the meantime my uh, 11 year old granddaughter is sitting there thinking about ways that she can be the heart and hands and life of Jesus to this woman and she reaches into her birthday money and she pulls out a dollar and first she says mom can I give her this and at first her mama was a little hesitant but then her mama said how can I refuse my child the opportunity to pour into the life of somebody in need and so she handed this lady a dollar as we handed her the meal and you know that just blessed my daughter granddaughter it showed her how to be the hands and the feet of Jesus and I know there's a lot of people that say well you know what they're going to do with that money but you know that's between them and God what we do is between us and God and we were sowing seed that day into the life of this child who can go forth from there and you know God will take her gift and he'll bless her back for it because she was being Jesus in the earth and we need to teach our children these principles. We need to teach them how to be Christ. Because let me read you something. In the second, in second Corinthians, in Second Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 15, Paul says, For we are to God the fragrance of Christ. Now we're the fragrance of Christ to God. But now he also says, And um, oh, well, we are the fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one we are the aroma of death leading to death, and to the other we are the aroma of life leading to life. You know, I began to think about this as I was um, preparing this message. I preached this message in the prison a couple of weeks ago to the ladies and inmates there, and I just began to encourage them that no matter what their situation was, they can be the fragrance of Christ because you can't keep God out of uh, out of prison you know you don't lock it up you don't 
take this word of God and, and bind it up. Even when the apostles were beaten and put in prison, they say, you know, you can bind us up, but the word of God, it's not bound. It's going to continue to work. So regardless to what we might be personally or, or where our physical body might be, the word of God cannot be tied up and bound. And so I was sharing this with these inmates who have made some really bad choices in their life. And now they have reached a place where they need Christ Jesus to come in and to to heal their life and you know uh, people talk about jailhouse religion and, and I know it's true I know it happens I've seen it I've witnessed it that when people get in situations where they really don't have anybody but God they turn to God and they they begin to uh, develop a relationship with the Lord in hard times but then as soon as things change for them and they get out then they go back to being who they were but you know it's not just people in a physical prison that that happens to. I've seen people that are so-called free walking around. When times are hard, they call upon the Lord and they cry out to Him for mercy and they want to use God and, and God get them out of their uh, situation. But then as soon as it's better, they go right back to that lifestyle that they were living that got them in this situation anyway in the first place. But we need to develop a relationship with Him that is lasting and then we can go forth and be him in the earth and you know that when God smells what's coming out of our life that he smells he smells the fragrance of his son Christ Jesus and that's what I was sharing with them and and that that as we go into places that we can change the atmosphere because of the way we smell and uh, you know I know that might sound a little funny to some people but just think about when Mary in the book of John and in chapter 12 when Mary went in and she broke the alabaster box opened on Jesus and she was pouring out on Jesus verse 3 says then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was F-I-L-L-E-D filled it was filled with the fragrance of that oil now let me tell you a little bit about spikenard some of you may have heard me share this before but spikenard is translated into meaning the life of man and so mary in essence poured her life out on jesus that that very day when she uh came in and in that uh room and she broke open that alabaster box and poured out that fragrant beautiful smell and it was so costly and you know it's going to cost us so much when when we follow Christ it's free salvation is free but then it cost us to to live a life of holiness and righteousness in order to continue with his blessings upon our life and she anointed his feet she bowed down upon her knees and she poured this out upon his feet and and that right there was a symbol of humility to smell like Christ we must walk in humility we must uh, view others better than you know better than ourselves or want better for others than we want for ourselves and not have a spirit of competition or jealousy in the body of Christ but to serve one another remember Jesus says the argument that took place among the disciples where they were saying who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God and and Jesus looks at them and says whoever becomes the servant whoever humbles himself and will serve the other one that person is going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God so to receive greatness in the kingdom is so opposite of receiving greatness in the earth and in this fleshly uh, arena where we live because the world says to be great you got to step on the little guy you've got to you've got to climb that corporate ladder you've got to succeed in everything you do and you have to be the best at everything you do you have to win to be the greatest but in scripture Jesus tells us that if we want to be the greatest then we need to humble ourselves and we need to serve one another 
Don't worry about being first. Don't worry about being best. Worry about seeing how you can serve and honor Christ through humility. And then Mary wiped his feet with her hair, and that totally represented submission, that she was subject to him and to his authority. Uh, The room she entered into was filled with men. There were no women present unless they were the women serving food, and, and they weren't there to worship. They weren't there to hear. They were not allowed to come into that setting. And here she was. And many of them said, oh, she's a sinful woman. But this woman had been delivered and set free by Jesus. And now she wanted to give something back, fulfilling scripture even. And as she did, she walked into this situation and she submitted herself to him. When we learn how to walk into submission, in submission unto the word of God, then we will begin to smell like Christ. We will be that precious fragrance of Christ that comes in and we will will walk in humility by pouring our life out upon him and then walking in submission to the teaching of the word. If your pastor preaches a word to you that as I heard it put recently, steps on your toes. You know, don't bow up and say, well, I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to listen to that. I can go somewhere else. I don't have to be subject to this kind of teaching. You know, if it's truth, then just ask God to help you uh, submit to it humble yourself and apply it to your life because Jesus is trying to get us to heaven. But if we get mad every time the preacher preaches against some sin in our life and we just move to another church, it's only a matter of time if that preacher's preaching the truth that you're going to hear it there too because God's trying to deal with something inside of you. He wants you to be the fragrant smell of Christ in the earth. He wants, when we walk into a room, he wants the atmosphere in there to change. And not because we are somebody, but because of the anointing that we carry, that it causes people to take in a deep breath of Jesus Christ every time we're in their presence. That when we pour out our life on Christ, it may cost us living a a whole life and a a righteous life, not a perfect life, but a life led by his spirit that comes out from among the world to be a separated people and apply the word to our life, that's going to cost us uh, the things that the world has to offer us in sinful manner. And we refuse that and give our will, our desires and our trust over to Christ. Then we're going to smell like Christ. We pour out our lives in order to carry this anointing. Uh, we, we got to walk in humility and submit to his word. And we are to be totally poured out for him, for his smell, for his fragrance, to fill the room and to fill our presence in our life and we we want to to have that in our life and it's going to cause us to be uh probably have few less friends than we have it will make people think you're weird or make people think that you're a religious fanatic and your friend pool might become really small because uh they don't really like the way you smell anymore because you don't smell like the world anymore you don't go to the same places you don't entertain the same desires or you don't act out on those same desires as the world does, but you have separated yourself and you've come out to be a separated people. It When, when people are in your presence and they uh, have that, you know, when they can smell that fragrance of Christ on your life, they don't like it because it begins to point out their sin and they don't want to deal with it. They, it begins to point out the things that they're doing that are, are not pleasing to God. And, and then it sometimes makes them develop an attitude that you just think you're better than everybody else or you just trying to be holier than thou. When that's not the truth at all, it's just that your presence brings conviction upon them because they don't smell like Christ and you do. Just think about that for a moment. There are those that are drawn toward that fragrance. 
kind of like the perfume samples in the mall, how we would go up and, you know, we don't really want to buy the perfume bottle, but we do want to smell of it and see, and just take that sample. And there's so many people that are like that in the spirit spirit they don't want to buy into this relationship with jesus christ they want to go to church on sunday they want to look good for the community they want to do good deeds they want to uh give to charities they want to have a uh, form of godliness but they want to deny the power thereof that is comes with this holy life that fragrance of christ produces in us they just want to spray it on for a little while and then when they get back out in the world they don't have to worry about people thinking they're odd because they don't act like Jesus they don't act like him they want to borrow a little a little spray now and then they don't want it to change their lives they don't want it to uh, make them different from the world. They want to be able to walk around and be the same person that the world is. And, and they, they just, you know, they become ashamed of who they are in Christ. And because there's no true relationship there, um, it'll, it'll repel people like that when you begin to talk about Christ in Walmart. People are like, ooh, let me go down the other aisle. These people are fixing to break out and start praying right here. I'm telling you right now if you don't want me to pray for you in walmart don't ask me to pray for you because chances are very high that i'm going to take your hand right there wherever we are and i'm going to pray for you right there on the aisle where the eggs and the butter are because if we go our separate ways i may forget to pray for you and i want to be able to say yes we'll pray right here done it many times in public had a woman in cracker barrel met her in the bathroom found out she was uh, gonna have a mastectomy in a few weeks because she had just been come she had just come from birmingham uh diagnosed with breast cancer prayed for her right there in the checkout line at the cracker barrel and god healed that woman and god did a miracle in that woman's life and it's an amazing story i can't wait for her to come and share what god did but we can't be ashamed to wear christ we can't be ashamed to smell like him and we can't be ashamed of him because Mark at, in, in the book of Mark around 34 and uh, chapter 8 34 he talks about not being ashamed of him see the world is perverse the world is wicked people aren't ashamed to sit up in public and curse people aren't ashamed to have bad attitudes people aren't ashamed to sit up and and drink and act a fool and 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 carry on all this craziness and 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 they're not ashamed of that so why should you and i be ashamed to bow our heads and pray over our meal and somebody see us do that it brings god glory because it's it smells like Christ. But he says, if you're ashamed of me in this wicked and perverse generation, and they're not ashamed of how they are, and you're ashamed of me, then I'll be ashamed of you when we stand before the Father. Oh, oh my goodness. Please, please don't live in a way where God will be ashamed of you. And don't be ashamed of him. Walk away from the dirty jokes if they're being told. And, and you know, walk away from them and say, you know what, my ears are on a garbage can. I don't want to hear that stuff because once it goes in there, it's going to be in there. And it's going to pop up in times when you don't want it to pop up. You're sitting in church and you're listening to the message and boom, there that dirty joke is popping up in your ears. And you can't hear the word because you've entertained something that wasn't smelling like Jesus. When you have your Bible with you, don't hide your Bible. You don't have to carry your Bible around with you everywhere you go. You're, the Word of God lives within you. But if you want to carry your Bible and you want to have that Word of God with you, don't cover it up with a, a, a blanket or don't hide it down in your, in your purse if you're ashamed of it. Just leave it at home and forget about it. But don't be ashamed of it. Say no to the after work drinks when everybody's going to just go out and unwind before they go home. And you think, you know, you're invited. Hey, why don't you join us? You can tell them, hey, I have a wine that you don't know about. I have this new wine of the Holy Ghost that lives in me, this Holy Spirit that lives in me. I have that new wine. I don't have to go out and unwind. I unwind when I talk to my father on the way home from work. Don't have to be ashamed. 
people walk around depressed, defeated, and they see you, and you're in the same situation that they're in. You work the same job they work. You're in the same environment they're in, but yet you've got joy, and you've got peace, and you're singing, and you have a skip in your step, and they can't understand it. What's the difference? Because you have the fragrance of the anointing in your life. You're drinking of this new wine we just talked about. You're allowing the Holy Spirit to flow in and out of you. And he is doing a work in your life that it surpasses what the world has. He says there's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And when we have that in us, we don't have to have the substances of the world to give us an artificial high. But we can have true joy and happiness in him. And when we walk out of the, of the place or into a place, we smell like Christ. You ever smelled somebody that you knew they had either been smoking or was around a smoker? You, you're, you're very in tune with that because you recognize it by the smell. You ever been somewhere with somebody that's rubbed good smelling stuff all over them and they get in the car and you're like, Woo, what is that? Or they walk past you in the store and you're like, man, I just followed them around a little while because they smell so good. What are you drawn to? You're drawn to that odor. You're drawn to that aroma. And you can, you can identify what that person has done by that smell. Well, so can we. When we have been with Christ, people can identify with us. They can identify with him. And I don't know if you've noticed or not, but we live in a pretty stinky world. We live in a world where little children are abused. We live in a world where babies are murdered in their mother's wombs. We live in a world where drunk drivers kill innocent people. We live in a world where drugs and alcohol are distorting people's minds, and they're doing all kinds of things to uh, innocent children or, or their spouses or just people in general or to themselves, destroying their own life because they are desperate for somebody to show them the way to the cross, for them to just have one, one passing moment of the fragrance of Christ in your life. And how do we do this? By living the life that Christ has called us to live. How do we know how? By getting in the Word of God and pulling it out of the Scriptures and applying it to our life, just like taking this Word and rubbing it all over our life anointing ourselves with a word to anoint means to smear or rub on to just rub on and smear the word of God all over our lives and when we do that then we will display and share the aroma of Christ because remember now Paul said for we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved, they recognize it. And among those who are perishing, they need it. To the one, we are the aroma of death leading to death because it points out sin. And to the other, we are the aroma of life leading to life because it points people to Christ. Who do you smell like today? Thank you for listening. We appreciate your time. And we pray that this word has ministered to you. But about of all the things you've heard me say here today, remember this. When you realize just how much Jesus Christ loves you and you surrender your life to him, you will begin to have the fragrance of Christ in your life and you will experience your greatest defining moment. <music>